Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Saturday 10 a.m. technique at the History Makers Online Crop. I'm just pulling up my video, and we are going to get started. We'll give everybody a minute or two to find us, because today we are doing something a little different. We are doing a craft along. I know some of you um, watch the videos live and then you go off on your own and you re-watch the videos and do the crafting along with me. But we thought for today at Kimberly's suggestion that we would do a craft along. So if you didn't see the game number six that was posted yesterday, the instructions for that game were to gather the items that you need for today's craft along and post a picture of them. So if you haven't gathered your items, you're going to want to do that real quick. And if you have gathered your items, but you forgot to take a picture, go ahead and take a picture right now before we start of all your gathered items. Because once you create <laughs> your, your uh, project, you're not going to uh, have the items to take a picture of. So those are your reminders. Gather your items up and take a picture of them, and then we will get started. If you're popping on to watch, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later on replay, you can say replay. Good morning, Mom. And if you have any questions while we're going along, I'm going to try, 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 and keep my eyes on the comments as we create. Um, or if you have any general comments, you can go ahead and make those. And um, and then when we're all done, I would love to hear from you what you thought about the craft along. And if you think it's something that we should include at every crop, I would love to know that too. So, um, yeah. So how's everybody this morning? Are you feeling awake, alive, enthusiastic? How does it go? Uh, alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. <laughs> I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. Oh, Kimberly's here. She can sing along with me. Good morning. I'm alive, awake, alert. I'm alert, awake, alive. I'm alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic. <laughs> Alrighty. So we had a list of items to gather. And for some reason, my list has wandered off. But that's okay. We, um, you needed to have a piece of cardstock, 12 by 12, and I suggested white, which I forgot to gather. I suggested white or a light color. I am going to use white, and then you were to have an ink that was either the same color as the color you're using. So if you're using white, you're obviously not using white ink, okay? Um, or a contrasting color. And so I kind of wanted you to look at your papers and see what color would look good with what you're pulling out, um, which is why I didn't suggest a color, but I will show you in a second um, some samples of the technique we're going to do, and that may change your mind on which ink you're going to use, but um, pretty much any color will work, okay? It's just it's just a really cool uh, effect that we're doing. A really cool technique. Hey, Kimberly. Good. Almost missed it. It went down the... Oh, you went down the Facebook rabbit hole. You were looking and scrolling. <laughs> well, I'm glad you found us. Okay. So you needed a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. I'm kind of going a little bit slow in case somebody didn't uh, gather their items yet. Then we also needed a... And I'm probably going out of order from the list, so forgive me for that. You needed a um, 5 by 12 piece of pattern paper. And when I give you the measurement 5 by 12, that means it's 5 across and 12 down. Okay? So the, the, the across number is always first. So if you have picked a pattern that doesn't work vertically like this and you've cut it horizontally like this, you're, you're going to want to maybe switch it up. If you have a pattern like this, it doesn't really matter. It can be horizontal or vertical, but... Um, it is going to go vertical. However, saying that, just because we're doing a craft along does not mean that your layout is going to look identical to mine. So if you decide you'd rather have something horizontally, totally up to you, right? It's your artwork. You create it how you want. I'm just giving you a jumping off point. Then you were to have a 12 by 1 inch 
piece of pattern paper. Okay, so again, make sure this is intended to go horizontally, 12 by 1 inch. Um, so if you need to switch up your paper, go ahead. Sometimes even just flipping over the paper will, <laughs> will give you the solution to whatever you're doing. Good morning, Jody. Good morning, Deborah. Hello, Mary. And then there was also a 12 inch by half inch piece of pattern paper or a zip strip or a border. Um, you may have pulled out a border. And so it doesn't even necessarily have to be a half of an inch. So if your border is a little bit bigger, no worries. You know, it's your art. <laughs> It'll do its thing. Then there was also a piece of cardstock. And so you wanted just something that coordinates nicely with all your things. And just because I'm putting them on the page like this doesn't mean that's where they're going to be. Okay, <laughs> and I'm just setting them here so we can see them all. And so our piece of cardstock was to be seven and a half by three and a half. Okay, and yes, it my my pattern, it's going to go horizontally. So that's why I'm laying it down there. You're also supposed to have two photos, um, two four by three photos. So because it's four by three, that means we're going landscape. So four by three. And um, if you have three by fours, that's fine. You can just rearrange your layout so that it works better for you, right? We all we all have a bit of experience um, with making a layout or a card, and so we can kind of manipulate things. Good morning, Heather. Everybody's popping on. And then you were to have some embellishments. Now for mine, um, because I have this lovely sticker sheet that goes along with these Life's a Hoot papers that I'm using, um, I'm just going to use my sticker sheet as my embellishments, but I did add a little um, a little extra here and that I took some alphabet stickers and my or not alphabet stickers alphabet stamps and it's the Havana alphabet and I did the word art and then I took the stamps from the Life's a Hoot card making stamp set and I used this swirly circle to kind of put a border on it. Um, but mostly I'm just going to use what's on the sticker sheet, which is super handy because it all coordinates and makes my life easier. Okay, so now to give you, oh, and then you're also supposed to have a scoreboard and a scoring tool. Or if you're like me and you don't own a scoreboard, you're going to need a ruler and something to make, you know, score lines with. And um, for that, I'm going to use my Versamat because it's got some give to it. Uh, because we need to make score lines that make a dent or a bump. <laughs> yeah. And you'll see how I kind of modify it. Because if you're using a scoreboard, you automatically get a dent and a bump because there's you're pushing through um, into a groove. But on something flat like this, you don't necessarily get a very distinguished dent or bump. <laughs> and so there's a little bit extra manipulation we have to do for that. But it works. It works. I tried it. It works. Okay, so let's show you what we are going to be doing today. We are going to be using our ink and our cardstock, our cardstock base, to create our own wood grain paper. So this particular piece I created using White Daisy, sorry, I'm just reaching way up here, and Toffee Ink. And so I thought I would show you this first because it looks like more traditional wood grain. It's kind of has that shabby chic. Oh, Allison, you can't hear. Uh, check to make sure you haven't got your sound turned off. Um, is anybody else having trouble with the sound? Good morning, Ina. Good morning, Allison. <laughs> I hope you can sort the sound out. Maybe if you go out and rejoin, that might help. So... Um, so for this one, I used traditional sort of toffee color. I'll show you also, in case you've chosen a colored cardstock, I will show you what this would look like if I used toffee paper with toffee ink. Isn't that fun? Looks kind of like uh, maple wood grain or something like that. And um, so you can use colored cardstock, you can use white cardstock. It just creates a different look, and they're both lovely. Um, this one has more of like a traditional stained wood look, and this has more of that painted wood that's kind of worn a little, you know, the shabby chic look. Okay, so that's one idea that can happen. 
then we can also take a look at what if we used a color? A color. So here I've got my Glacier ink and I did it on white paper. Okay, so again, it gets that kind of shabby chic look. Now I used just a tiny piece of paper because I didn't want to go through pages and pages and pages of white. Um, so it doesn't give you a good look at it, <laughs> but it does still give you a something to look at. And then what happens if I do it on glacier paper? Isn't that a cool effect? Right? Very cool. So you can see that you either want to do white with a contrasting color or you want to do um, a color with the same color. You can also do a color with a different color. I could take, um, oh there I did it on the other side. This one was done on the side with the dents and so you don't get um, sort of the dark line and if you do it on the side with the bumps you get the dark line in between all your pieces of wood <laughs> I forgot I was gonna show you that okay and then how about honey butter on white not my most favorite thing I don't know I just think yellow looks a little odd on the wood grain um, pattern but you know it's all right Lagoon, isn't that gorgeous? Ooh, ooh. Nice and vibrant. Feels like beach um, kind of theme would go good with that. And then I tried Mist on white. Isn't that beautiful? I really like this and I really wished it matched what I was doing. But this is not a color that coordinates with, with my paper. And unfortunately, the color that I really wanted to use, I don't have. And so that's okay. We, we pick something else. Um, uh, Kimberly can hear Allison restarted. Does it, do you have sound now, Allison? Of course, Allison's not going to be able to answer my question if she can't hear me. <laughs> Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Robin. And um, let's see, we've also got Periwinkle on white. Now, I didn't do all these colors on their same colors. Isn't this cool? I love this. This sort of has that almost like frosty wintry feel to it yeah so pretty and then I was kind of going through colors that go with my paper collection because <laughs> I was trying to pick which one I wanted and so I tried flamingo on white as well and yeah so uh you can even do something like um I had I showed you the lagoon here if you had uh lagoon paper you could use toffee on it, and it would make kind of a patinaed look, right? So you've got the brown instead of um, white and white and lagoon. You would have lagoon with brown on it, which is really cool. It's a dark combination, but really gorgeous. Oh yay! Allison's got got sound. Awesome. Yes, Lynn, the distressed wood grain is so cool. And you know what? I'm a sucker for wood grains. So every time there's a paper collection or um, a set of paper with wood grains, I'm, I'm in there like a dirty shirt. I got to buy it. But there's never enough. So I like that this technique helps me create my own wood grain, right? Like if I want a wood grain, I can just zip this up and ta-da, there we go. So let's get started. I am going to start with my white daisy cardstock. And so if you have your scoreboard, you're going to want to get your scoreboard. And if you're like me and you're using a ruler and a bone folder or a stylus, then go ahead and grab those items. Now this, um, I know this is called a craft along. But this part of the technique, you kind of do your own thing because there's no set rule about this. What we're going to do is we're going to create lines, vertical, horizontal, whichever way is more comfortable for you to create the lines, um, all the way across our page uh, and varying widths. So I'm not going to tell you, okay, do half an inch, do three quarters. Of, that would be really annoying for me to do that. <laughs> you guys would get sick of me going, okay, now move it over. Just do what feels right to you. So if you want all of your wood grain to be exactly the same size like it would be on, you know, like a laminate floor, then go ahead and make your pieces all the same size, all your widths. 
If you want it to be random, then make some small, make some big, mix it up. Um, you do want to keep them straight. That is kind of the only rule about this. And if you are using a colored cardstock, other than white, um, this next little piece of information is integral. If you're like if you're using close to my heart cardstock, our colors are different on the either side. So whichever color it is that you want to have as your finished inked side, that needs to be down. Okay, so you're going to do the scoring on the back because you want those raised bumps on the front to pick up the ink and create the cracks in between your wood. So if you have the, you know, glacier paper or lagoon or the toffee paper and you want the dark side, put the dark side down. And if you want the light side, put the light side down. Okay, so whichever side you're going to use in the end needs to be down so it gets the bump side. All right, I'm sure you all understood that. And then all you're going to do is you're going to just use your ruler or your scoreboard and you're just going to give yourself some score lines. And, you know, just whoop, it doesn't take long, especially with a scoreboard, just kind of all the way across. Nice, good score lines. You can decide how skinny or how wide you want them to be. Just keep on going all the way across. Now there's going to be a chunk of this that's going to get hidden, but we're just going to do the whole thing anyway. And there we go. I think I'm going a little crooked, but that's okay. It's all right. It all comes out in the wash, as they say. It's wood. Nobody said wood was ever perfectly the same size, right? Or perfectly even. I've lived places where the wood was not perfectly even, even on the floors. <laughs> all right. So once you have scored all the way across, Allison, is a stylus or bone folder better? Um, most people just have a preference. I don't think it matters either way. Especially if you're, use, if you're using a scoreboard, just use whatever tool you always use with a scoreboard. If you're using a ruler like me, I just use this because I don't have a stylus. <laughs> so it's not really that it's one way better or not. And, eh, you know, you just, I find doing it this way, you got to push really hard as opposed to a scoreboard where you don't really push that hard. Uh, good morning, Jill. So once you have done all your lines, you're going to flip it over because this is now the side that you want to use. If you are like me, and your bumps are not very bumpy. <laughs> but the bumps on me are bumpy, but the bumps on my paper are not very bumpy because I was pushing into a solid surface as opposed to a scoreboard. So I'm going to leave mine on the side with the dents, and I'm going to turn it sideways because that's easiest, and I'm just going to lift and kind of make sort of a crease on all of my score lines. Do not do this if you used a scoreboard. This is only for people who had to use a ruler and a versamat and, you know, this is just because we need bigger bumps. <laughs> it's not often you hear people say that. You need bigger bumps, but we need bigger bumps. You know, you're not creasing it down like, you know, we're going to fold it. I'm just making it so that the paper kind of bends. And yes, it will curl up, but it's okay. We'll curl it the other way to flatten it out a bit. Okay, so we're just trying to make a little bit of a raised part. I'm going to turn it the other way on all of our bumps. So again, if you did a scoreboard, you're not doing this step. So you're just sitting there watching me mangle my paper, and that's all good. Okay, there we go. So now we've got that. And if you're like me, your paper is now going in a circle. Uh, so all you're going to do is you're going to take it and just loosely, loosely roll it the other way and try and encourage it to be flat again. Okay, so just make a nice roll and there we go. All right, so now we have our bumpy side being a little more bumpy. And if you didn't need um, to do that step, you're just happily waiting. How's everybody doing? Robin says, I need more white paper. Okay, but you can use colored paper for this too. I hope, um, I don't know 
um, I don't know if you saw the beginning, but um, you can do it on colored paper as well. Um, here's the example of toffee um, doing this uh, design versus the white. So you can totally do it with colored paper. So this is like a toffee paper with toffee ink. Um, and then I showed also, what was the other color one? Glacier. Glacier on glacier paper or glacier on white. Okay, so you can totally do it with a colored paper if you've run out of white. Now, this part next is going to be a little messy, okay? And Kimberly's got the bumps, all good. Heather's getting ready. <laughs> Michael, oh, you're getting to go to Michael's next month. Awesome. Yes, that's the time to stock up. When you don't live near a craft store, you got to get it while the getting is good. So I'm removing my Versa mat, and I have my all-purpose mat on my table to protect my work surface. So um, you need to get your paper onto something that has a little bit extra room around it um, because you don't want to get ink all over the place. <laughs> so I'll give you a minute to make sure you've got um, even like a scrap piece of wrapping paper or uh, wax paper or um, anything. You, you can think of a piece of newspaper underneath or um, if you have a glass working mat you can use that because you can just wipe it off when you're done or if you have an all-purpose mat this is great it's the messy mat so I am going to be using my toffee ink for this but you can now get whatever ink color it is now that you've kind of seen where we're going with this you can think about okay what kind of wood grain you know painted shabby chic wood grain you want so grab that ink color I don't think it matters what kind of ink you use. If you have, um, th these are water-based, um, permanent ones would probably work. Um, the d distress oxides would probably work. It doesn't matter. Any kind of ink. <laughs> Heather's ready to go. Awesome. Woohoo. And all right. So the trick with this is to use nice, big, long arm movements. So I'm not going to take the lid off of my ink yet. But when I do, you're going to hold the ink in your hand. You may find that you want to kind of turn your paper a little bit. Just depends on how your arm moves. So do a little practice with your ink pad. What you want to be able to do is to put your ink down and drag it straight all the way following the lines on your paper. So with your ink pad still closed, figure out which is the best angle for you to, to pull on. <laughs> okay. And you want to do nice, long, straight strokes, okay? And then we're going to take the lid off, and we're going to see what happens, okay? So you're going to start at the top, and you're going to want to have, I'll move it down so you can see, you're going to want to start with your ink pad kind of half off, right? And you don't put it down and push, just put it down and then drag it across. You're not pushing, just dragging, okay? And if hardly any ink gets on there, don't worry. So let's go. Whoop. Okay. And look at that. You can see where the ink pad has um, touched any parts of the paper that's raised and it's applied some ink. Now, don't worry if there's gaps. It's okay. You're going to shift over a bit. I'm going to go maybe about halfway on where I did the first one and just whoop, all the way down. And you're going to do that all the way across, just pulling it down. When you get to the end, you might have to switch, switch arms here and pull it all the way down. Okay? Now, take a look at it and say, is that enough ink? Is that what I want it to look like? If the answer is no, spin it around the other way so that your bottom is now the top. And you're going to do the same process again. You can even start... Um, half off the page over here because you got a messy mat. It's not going to make a mess. See how magical this looks? Okay, we're going to start again. And the closer you swipe it to the last swipe, the more ink coverage you will get. And you're just going to go all the way across. You want to make sure that you're going all the way to the end of your paper. Okay, now take a look at it again and say, are there any spots that I want more ink? Do I have enough ink? Do I like the look of it? 
And if you want to add more, then go ahead and add a little bit more. There's a few spots where I think I need more. And just go ahead and do that. Spin it around. Whatever you want. If you find that one of your edges, see how this edge, there's kind of blank spots when you get to the bottom. Um, that's, um, that's where you want to start at that edge and come down. Okay? And then when you get to the point where you're like, ooh, I like that. It looks so cool, like shabby chic wood grain. Then that's the point at which you stop. <laughs> because if you keep going, then you'll be disappointed. Okay? So once you get to that point, just stop. Stop. Don't do any more. And that is your completed wood grain. Now you can chop this up. You can make it into cards. You can make it into matting for photos. You can do whatever you want. So wonderful. You now know how to make your own wood grain and you can use it in so many different ways. So you guys, uh, if you're excited about this, sounds like Lynn is excited about this. She's saying it's really fun. You want to clean off your mat, um, especially if you're going to change colors to uh, something else. <laughs> But uh, also so that, because, you know, I'm, I'm done with my messy mat, but if I went and stuck my arm on it, I'd probably get ink on my shirt. In fact, I'm going to just roll mine up and take it away because I don't need it anymore. If you use one of these all-purpose mats, you want to make sure that you never fold it because you don't want any crease lines in it. So you just roll it up and then I just stick it in a little spot on my shelf just like that. All right, let's bring in the... Versamat, so you don't have to look at the glare on my table. And it'll just take me half a minute to figure out how to line it all up so you can see my whole layout as we're working. Jody loves the idea. Awesome, awesome. Uh, are you crafting along with us, Jody, or, or, or are you just watching to see how it goes? That's okay, too. Alrighty. So we have our wood grain. Now, for this layout that we're creating, one of your edges, either top or bottom. Oh, the other thing is, you can totally decide that you want your wood grain going sideways. Just because I'm putting mine up and down does not mean that yours has to be up and down, okay? I'm putting mine up and down. And because one of my edges looks a little better than the other, this top one, there's a few spots where it just kind of faded out, but I didn't want to keep going and kind of, you know, muck it up or make little weird marks. Um, decide which side you like the best and put that at the bottom. <laughs> um, and which side you like, like the least or that maybe has a flaw or two, put that at the top because our top is going to get covered. Okay, the very tippity top, um, unless you move your pieces around. Good morning, Shannon. You're going to Hobby Lobby. Woohoo! Time to get some cardstock. That's what Robin was just saying. Uh, Leslie, can't wait to try this. Well, I am not the genius, Leslie. And this is what I meant to tell you at the beginning. Um, this was an idea. I, I've seen other people do it, but um, one of our uh, close to my heart makers, Tanya Roberts, um, did a little demonstration of this online. And posted it on the maker page. And so everybody was like, oh my gosh, it's the awesomest thing ever. Yay, we can make our own wood grain. So Tanya Roberts, that's who I got the idea from to share with you guys today. So um, now we can start bringing in our pattern paper. And the first one I want to bring in is the 12 inch by 1 inch strip of pattern paper. And I'm going to give you a quick little uh, sneak peek ahead at what's happening. So I'm going to be putting my strip at the top, okay? Right at the very top, lined up all the way across, if I could do such a thing. <laughs> and then my large piece of patterned paper that, um, that um, is 5 by 12 is going to go on top of it right about at the three and a quarter inch mark. Three and a quarter? No, three inch mark. At the three inch mark. So the left side will be lined up at the three inch mark. The next step that's going to happen is that the little border is going to go butted up right against the bottom of 
the um, first pattern paper we put on there. And the reason I'm showing you these steps ahead of time is because you need to make a decision. I am going to have my pattern paper going on top of my one inch strip and then under my border strip, okay? So that it's it's got kind of a different look, right? Where our pattern paper continues all the way to the top, but then there's this border strip that's gonna go across. So if you don't want that, you can have a diff couple different options. You can put this underneath like that so that the borders are on top of your pattern paper, or you can put this on top of both, right? Lots of options with that. Now, if you decide you don't like the look of that and you wanna flip everything sideways, or you wanna, you know, put your pieces of paper beside your, your pattern paper, totally up to you. This is your layout, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put my 12 by one inch lined up right at the top. Let me just grab my adhesive and stick it and stick it <laughs> alrighty so what is everybody deciding are you gonna have it half and half like mine are you gonna put it all under you can put it all on top it's hard to chat when you're when you're crafting isn't it <laughs> now don't mind me I'm gonna actually turn my paper around because I won't be able to see the top of my paper from the angle I'm working at. So I'm gonna spin it around and stick it on this way. Just make sure that if you have a pattern that matters which way is up, that you put it the right way up if you're doing that kind of spinning around thing that's happening here. Okay, so we've got our 12 by one inch piece going there. And then our um, five by 12, we're going to line it up at about the three inch mark here on the left. So the right hand side will be at the eight inch mark. And let's add some adhesive. Do do. Do do do. Do do do. And I suppose I should look in the comments to see what's happening. Leslie missed that one. <laughs> yeah, go. if you just go, because Leslie's a maker too, if you go onto the maker page and do the search, you know, the little search thing, just type in wood grain and it'll be like the first or second thing that pops up because it's nice and recent. Yeah, Tanya, or search by Tanya Roberts. That will work too. And I believe she put it on YouTube, maybe. Uh, she might have a YouTube channel, so you could go and look at it there. And she showed a whole bunch of different examples, like on cards and things that she created. So cool. She's a great artist. Oh, no, Deborah, your tiny tablet all froze up. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, hopefully you can catch anything you missed on the replay. Replay. Michelle Heather says, I don't know which paper for my 5 by 12 I have two choices. Ooh. Well, take them both and kind of... Eh, eh. And if you're still not sure, then wait till you get everything else laid on there. And just don't stick anything down until, until we get to the end. And that way you can switch it out if you want to, right? Now, for my strip, I was showing you this piece of paper, this um, half-inch one. It's kind of like a zip strip. But I'm actually, I couldn't show you this <laughs> because it's still stuck to the thing. I'm actually going to use one of these border strips from, <coughs> from the sticker sheet. And it's got gold foil on it. Mm. But I couldn't take it off and show you because it would stick to everything. <laughs> so now I can go ahead and grab my sticker. And again, I'm going to have to turn my paper around so I can see the bottom. Make sure I line it up across. There we go. So fun. I love that foil. Ooh, doesn't that just look nice? Yay! I I see all you guys with your foiling machines, and I'm like, mm. but then I think, no, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> I should just do my thing. <sighs> okay, then the next piece we have is everybody caught up. We're all good. I'm not going too fast. I'm pretty sure, um, as long as the wood grain was okay. If you had to restart your wood grain, you might be a little bit behind. If you decided you wanted to change colors. 
The next piece is the seven and a half by three and a half piece of cardstock. And it's going to go on our page. Don't stick it down yet, because um, we got to do something to it first. It's going to go on our page at about the three inch mark. About the three inch mark and um, kind of centered on this pattern paper. So that puts it at about um, one and three quarters in from the edge. So one and three quarters in and three inches up. But before we do that, I want to dovetail one end. And it's on my end, it's going to be the one on this side. Not that it matters because my paper can turn around. <laughs> so if you like to be particular about where the center of your paper is, you can go ahead and it's three and a half. So that would be one and three quarters. You could make a little mark here at one and three quarters. Otherwise, just eyeball it and you're going to dovetail it. So you want to make a little snip in and I'm going to go in maybe half an inch. I really don't like making big dovetails. Um, I like keeping them low, low profile. So I'm just going in about half an inch and then I'm going to start in my bottom corner here and just point my point of my scissors towards the top of that snip and cut off like that. And then I'm going to come from the other point and get it lined up and point my tip of my scissors towards the top of the snip again and then just go across. If you don't like um, having to go snip snip to get to the center, then use longer scissors. <laughs> That's what helps because then you can line the line the blade right up. Okay. So there we go. Let's add some adhesive to the back of this. Do, do. Do, 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 do. If there's a chance that you are going to be tucking any embellishments under any of your pieces of paper or under your photos, you're going to want to keep your adhesive in from the edge so that there's a, you know, leeway for you to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to one and three quarters and then up to three, and then stick her on down. If you like to be more precise, because some people like to be precise, you can take your ruler and put it across at three inches, like so, making sure that your paper's, you know, straight across, line it up, and then come in your one and three quarters and stick your paper down like so. There we go. I might have come in a little bit farther than one and three quarters. Was it one and three quarters? Mm. Nah. Eh, it might have been one and a half. It doesn't matter. <laughs> kind of centered on your pattern paper. Oh shoot, you made it three inches. You know what? It's okay. It's okay, Kimberly. You can either recut it or you could add a little zip strip along the edge, make it a little stylized. You can add a little zip strip. Or you could just leave it at three inches because it really doesn't matter. You'll be okay. What we're going to do next is you're going to take your two photos, and maybe this will help you decide, Kimberly. You're going to take your two photos, and you're going to center them on your strip of cardstock. And you want to have them come over... Um, the edge of the pattern paper, maybe three-eighths of an inch or a quarter of an inch, like that. And they're just going to be kind of lined up like that. And we're going to stick those down. So you're going to have your pattern paper, and then it's going to bump out around your photo, and then it's going to bump out around there. So if you're finding this too narrow, was that three inches or three and a half? Let me just double check because maybe I'm saying something. Yes, it's three and a half. <laughs> I was hoping I wasn't messing you up. Um, the photos are four by threes. So four inch by three inch. Um, so all you're going to find is that you're going to be a little tiny touch narrower. So if you, that doesn't bother you, then don't worry about it. The other thing you could do is you could do a matting for for your, um, your little flag. Just have two layers of cardstock. Why not? <laughs> Lots of choices. Okay, so let's go ahead and stick our photos down. Now, if you decided that you preferred things on the horizontal, 
or you have, um, if you have vertical photos, you could still do this, although that looks a little bit awkward. Depending on the type of photos, you could maybe overlap them a little bit like this and bring them a little closer together. You could put them side by side this way. You know what? <laughs> it all works. You can just kind of go with the flow, see what you see, whatever works for you. You could even mat your photos if you want. I didn't give you um, instructions for matting your photos, but you could totally do that. Now, let's see if I can be um, funky here. Find the center of my little thing and... I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. I don't want it, them tight up against each other. But, you know, I can make sure that it's a little bit straight. So there's my little gap. And there we go. There's our little photo. It's kind of worked perfectly. Um, this In this photo that I'm putting down here, that's me. And this is my friend Kathy and my friend Claire. Claire's also a close to my heart maker. And we went to Visual Arts Brampton. And we did a paint night. And we created these beautiful pieces of artwork. And it was a lovely, fun evening. It's nice to go out with your lady friends, your girlfriends, and hang out and do some art. And Visual Arts Brampton here in Brampton is a fabulous art studio. I have lots of fun there. Okay, so there we go. Now, I probably could have bumped these over a little bit more, but it's all good. There's still a little bump, and that's kind of the look we want. Now, the next step is just your embellishing. And so um, you can decide what you're going to add, where you're going to place it. I'm going to use this, um, this one here that says every day. And I'm just going to stick it right on down here. And I'm going to kind of overlap my photo a little bit like that because there's just ceiling out there. You know, the ceiling of the art studio is maybe not the most gorgeous thing to look at, you know, so we could go ahead and cover that up. And then I'm going to bring in my little circle that I created that says art, and I'm going to add that on there. So it says art every day. And, you know, you know me, I like, I like the art stuff. So, you yeah, know, add a little bit of foam tape to this. How's everybody doing? How's your, how's your layout coming together? Who's, I should have asked this before, who's actually crafting along and, and who's just watching for now? Get a feel for how many people, I can see, ooh, I see some hearts. Uh, ooh, wows, I see wows. <laughs> awesome. Allison, you're crafting along, woohoo. So let's add our little art every day. So fun. And... Then we can just add some embellishments here and there. Maybe I'll add ooh, some little gold foil and a little flower because why not? So let's see. We'll add a little foil, a little flower, and tuck them under there like that. So pretty. And then what else can we do? Let's add another little foil and flower. Over here. I could pop these up, but you know what? They're kind of looking looking okay. They're just the way they are. Foil and flower. Stickers are so easy, aren't they? <laughs> I just stick them on. Alrighty, and hmm, what else? Oh, maybe one of these little wordy things. On this, oh, on this day, that we got what really happened. Or we could do what really happened on this day. That would be cool. Happy place. Oh, yes, the art studio is a happy place. Maybe we'll do on this day. On this day, because we got art every day. So on this day. Put that down here. Maybe I'll even overlap the photo a little bit so it mirrors the overlapping that's happening at the top. I'm mumbling to myself as I craft. <laughs> so far, so good, Carol says. Oh no, Heather, you lost us and you switched to the phone. You know what? My, my video just started again too. I'm not sure what's happening there. 
Um, Mary's crafting along. Deborah's crafting along. Woohoo, everybody. Lynn is crafting along. Kimberly, Cheryl, Allison. Yay. I hope the video is working for everybody. Mine has gone for a for a tank here. I'm going to restart it and see what happens. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's back again. Sometimes you just got to refresh. There we go. Just checking my camera, making sure everything's good. And yeah, you just add as much or as little embellishment as you want. Now this little spot here on your flag, you can either embellish there or you can use that as a journaling spot. Um, mine is kind of dark, so I would probably use my white gel pen to write my journaling on there. And let's see, what else? I don't know, this big bunch might be too big for adding a little something down here, but maybe I could add a couple more things over here. Tuck that one under. Put that one on top. Maybe another leafy number. Why not? Uh, maybe this one. Go for a different shape. Great thing about these stickers is that they're very sturdy. So you can lift and tuck and do all sorts of things with them. <laughs> that makes life easier. Alrighty, let me see one more thing. Oh, maybe this, this little pizzazzy little number. Um, one thing when it helped me, helped me to decide what kind of ink I wanted to use, the little um, swirly things and the splashy things on this um, pattern paper is toffee colored. And so I thought these lines are kind of, they're trying to sort of imitate gold. So they have that sort of scrubbed off look to them like there would be shiny spots. And so I thought, you know what, this kind of has that same scrubbed off <laughs> look. Um, so it kind of gave me a little bit of a clue as to what maybe I should do over there. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this little guy right there, kind of overlapping. And, oh, my video stopped again. Oh, no, it went for you too, Shannon. Ugh, yep. Yeah. I don't know, the interwebs, probably it's the weather, right? It's just, we're going to be fighting with it all day, I am sure, because um, I'm sure there's lots of people without power right now. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things. <sighs> Unfortunately, when we have bad weather, all the things tend to go a little, <laughs> a little bit, so, just adding in a couple more little touches on there. Hmm, so pretty. All right. Um, I might add a few other little embellishments, but that is pretty much the layout done. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And once you're done creating, I would love you. Yes, Heather, I would love you to take a photo of it, and I'm going to post um, my layout. I'll make a post, and and then everybody can add theirs in the comments so we can make kind of a gallery of all the layouts that we created. Awesome. All right. Have a wonderful rest of the morning, and we will see you later on for Chat and Craft at noon. And today, because it's Saturday, I don't have to go get my daughter from school, so we will be on until 3 o'clock noon till three. All right. Toodaloo. Have a great time. Bye.